Welcome to The First Word. I'm your host, Paul Crouch, Jr. Today we're taking a look at the movie Unbroken, the story of Olympian runner and World War II soldier Louis Zamperini, who spent 47 days drifting on a raft in the ocean before being captured as a POW by Japanese forces. The epic war drama produced and directed by Angelina Jolie and starring Jack O'Connell focuses on Louis's childhood, Olympic adventures, and survival as a POW during World War II. Years ago, I had a chance to interview the hero, and I can tell you, his life is a powerful story of survival, resilience, forgiveness, and redemption. Until his dying day, Louis Zamperini's motto was, don't give up, don't give in, there's always an answer to everything. Now let's take a look at this amazing man's story, Unbroken. follow darkness. Keep going the way you're going, you end up as a bum on the street. You train. You fight harder than those other guys, and you win. If you can take it, you can make it. You can do this, Lou. You just gotta believe you can. Pop does. Ma does. I do. Louis, a moment of pain is worth a lifetime of glory. We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! I got good news and bad news. Who is the Olympic athlete? Look at me. Hello, mother, father. This is your Louis talking. I am now interned in a Tokyo prisoner of war camp. I can't say this. What it says about America, it's not true. This man must be taught respect. Each prisoner will teach him this lesson. He used to think that I could do anything. And I was better than I am. Who says you're not? If you get me through this, I swear I'll dedicate my whole life to you. If I can take it, I can make it. Stay down. If he drops it, shoot him. I can't remember in my life a, a moment where it was a, a, something creatively I needed to do so much. And I'm sure that was because it wasn't just creatively, but it was also emotionally and as a human being. I, I read his story and I was, I was in Cambodia with my family. I was halfway through the book, my kids were all around. And I just, I realized this is it. This was what I need in my life. This is what I've been looking for. This is what I believe I should put out into the world what people need. We need to be inspired and reminded of the strength of the human spirit and someone like Louis who is this beautifully relatable, imperfect person who achieved greatness and, um, and it speaks to all of us. So I fought and fought for months and I had to um, try to, we talked about the construction, how to get the whole book into the film, what scenes were important how I would, you know, the managing of the budget, the managing of 
how to shoot a shark attack, <laughs> and, and uh, finally um, had my big pitch day. Um, and then I didn't hear anything for a few days, and I was a basket case. Um, and then I got the call. No filmmaker is more fortunate than to have someone like Louis to work with, to tell his life story. He's a man who not only is, is, is happy to express and talk about his whole life and all of his experiences, including the worst experiences he ever had in his life. He has the memory of them and he's able to speak about them, which is not common of his generation. Uh, but then you also have Laura Hillenbrand, who is such a wonderful woman. Um, and is, wrote this beautiful book that is so, you, could, you can see it. When you, you flip her pages, you can actually see the, the film. So she did most of the work for me um, by writing that extraordinary book, and, and it's so well-researched. So I had the two of them I could call, and when I was confused or in doubt or not sure of anything from something profound about the plank or something as simple as was there a screwdriver in the raft, um, that they could answer. And what I love, I love so much about this story is that Louis is not, he was, he didn't win at the Olympics. It wasn't the fact that he got a gold medal. And it was the fact that he just was falling so far behind and was in a category beyond what he, what he should have been in for his athletic ability. And he, he just pushed himself so hard and he refused to fail. And, and so this last, fastest lap and this this what what made people stand up was to see somebody fight it wasn't about winning it was about seeing somebody try really hard and not give up and that is such a that's the thing every single one of us every time we see it no matter whether it's a film in life the, it fills us because it's what we need to, to get through our lives. Because everybody, everybody's gonna go down. Everybody's gonna go through things, no matter who you are, they're gonna go through so many things in life. You know, and if you get back up, if you can get back up, just you, on your own, you decide to fight another day. It's, it's a great, great message. The Finns, Hawker, Leighton, and Salmonen have set the pace, and they are not letting up. And Zamperini is fading too, dropping further back. And into the eighth lap. It's the Finns still in the lead with Salmonen in first place. Come on, Louis. Come on, Louis. And we start the last lap. The Finns seem to be in control. It doesn't look like Don Lash is going to bring home the medal for the USA. He seems to have some gas in reserve. He really is making up some time. Hockard and Leighton will be one and two, but look at that Sam Perini. Yeah, I mean, at the stage of shooting, he was the other side of the Pacific Ocean. So, unfortunately, I didn't have him at, at hand, you know, to steer me in, in that sense. But Angelina knew him very well. And I was motivated on a daily basis by the ideal 
that the pair of us would walk the red carpet together. I'd be able to see his life, our, our, our take on his life story pan out in front of him and I hope that his reaction was a good one. I feel very aggrieved that that won't be the case, but Angelina had the opportunity to show him something, which he responded positively to. So we'll take that as a result. Yeah, Jack did a good job at portraying him, and so much so that we call him dad when we see him. And uh, yeah, it was, it, it really captured uh, his, uh, you know, he was quite a rascal when he was a kid. And then uh, he found, uh, you know, a way to turn himself around with sports, uh, you know, somewhat. I mean, he still had, had a, a defiant attitude and uh, which kind of, you know, stayed with him through the war. And it was probably that defiance that got him through the, the war. The most challenging elements of the shoot uh, I was aware of prior to for being particularly challenging. So you, you try and source some adrenaline from somewhere. It's the things that you can't foresee. They're the ones that really get you. But I was underneath the plank during that sequences, them sequences, and, and it made me faint twice. Two, two separate occasions I fainted underneath the wood there. So that might suggest that in that contest, that the plank won. I think the hardest thing is when you're so passionate about a project is being able to let it go at the end of the day. And especially this, something that's inspired you so much. It's, and when you're in one of these scenes, you just hope you've done enough or you've, you've made the moment. I mean, uh, Angie is, uh, her vision within this was so, was so classic and, and her and Roger Deakins didn't want to like stray from the old classic films like Papillon and yeah, The Hill it's quite a classic and really feel wanted to, to sort of yeah. make it feel like it, the films that inspired them of this generation. And so being a part of that, um, I mean, you, you never want to stop filming a scene. <laughs> Yeah, there was an empathy about her, you know, like she knows what you're going through, she understands it, she sort of can see it from your perspective. Um, and she's very hands-on. I remember like an image, like like in the last image when Donald's like got my head on his lap, like she was like trying to figure it out. So she like climbed in the boat and she like put my head on her lap and was like, I think it's like this, you know, and Jack, you're here, you know, it's it's very that and it's like, let's, let's find out what it is together. And she's curious about your instinct and knew that we, you know, we had done as much as much homework as we could and we were all in it for a hundred percent, so she wanted to know what we had to bring, you know? I'm gonna kill him. Then they shoot you. I don't give a damn, let him shoot me. That's not how we beat him. We beat him by making it to the end of the war alive. That's how we do it. That's our revenge. If I can take it, I can make it. Precisely. My brother Pete used to say that. He used to think that I could do anything. He used to think that I was better than I am. Who says you're not? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I've, I've been put through the ringer a few times. Um, and it's something we crave. I mean, I've always kind of craved the intensities, the, yeah. the, the sort of, um, you know, I guess I haven't really done a comedy yeah, <laughs> before, yeah. but um, but we're so, uh, the reason we were all together on that set was we're so passionate about the story of Laura Hillenbrand's incredible book, which she did. Uh, Louis Zamperini's story is just almost too, uh, uh, crazy to be true and and when you read it you're just so inspired by this guy's resilience and and his passion and his uh, you know just every time he gets knocked down he's getting right back up again we were so honored to be there and we would have done anything this was definitely for me like uh, one of like the most intense um, projects ever physically especially um, but emotionally too you know it's like it's, you go to some dark places for sure. But we were, you know, we, we knew that the, we loved the book, we loved her, and we knew that we were in service of something bigger than us. 
for your generous gift of $107, the Word Network will send you this beautiful leather-like lavender Bible for the Spirit-led woman of God. This modern English translation is richly etched with the Word logo and is an excellent study Bible or teaching tool. It includes daily lessons, profiles of Old and New Testament women, scriptures that edify the Word, daily devotions, colorful maps, deeper training on the power of the Holy Spirit, and guidance for your home and family. In addition, there are prayers and contributions from prominent Christian women like Lisa Bevere, Babby Mason, Marilyn Hickey, Mercy Lokolutu, and many others. This unique Bible makes the Word come alive and is perfect for the new believer or seasoned Christian. Call now and order one for yourself or give it as a gift to family and friends. Call 855-730-WORD. That's 855-730-9673. Thank you for your generous financial support. Because of you, we're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. He was very, very well educated. He was very intelligent. And he was, he's described in the book as a beautifully crafted monster. He was stunning and intelligent and a force to be reckoned with. And so I felt that we had to find somebody that had real presence. And, um, and then I also believe to cast somebody who plays a you know, what's considered a bad guy, uh, what's considered somebody who's, who's volatile and ruthless and horrible, is you have to cast somebody that actually is quite the opposite of that, somebody who's uh, a great person, because they're not, uh, it's not somebody that's going to enjoy and, and have a good time and get off on being a villain, it's somebody that really doesn't want to be a villain, that will find the deeper side of what that means, and Miyavi is somebody who loves his country, he's, he's, um, very intelligent, very patriotic, very um, and and very very grounded. Very, his music is very interesting when you listen to his music and his lyrics, and his uh, and he's and he's a very uh, wonderful dad and a sweetheart of a man. I, I learned the history of war and then, you know what Japan went through and then, uh, but you know the whole world. But I didn't know this story before and then so I was hesitant you know it's really dark side of the history but I, I think it's it's all about uh, how strong a human being can be it's it's global message you know it's not about the war or you know conflict between countries it's all about forgiveness and the unbroken spirit Louis achieved and improved in his life so to deliver this message to the audience I thought it's really meaningful to be a villain in a film. You are enemies of Japan. You will be treated accordingly. Look at me. Look me in the eye. It was hard. I mean, hard decision to tackle this role and thought process to get into the character and but we, I mean, Angie and I talked about these characters a lot, and, you know, we came to believe that he was also sensitive and a vulnerable person. So that's why we tried to put humanity and respect into the character. Oh, of course, every day it was so intense. We had to keep the distance from each other. I mean, from the actors, even Japanese guards, I was, you know, totally isolated, but, yeah, the scene in the very end it was it was the toughest, and then it's way, way harder than I expected. And you know, to express those negative feelings like confusion, 
madness, fear, and depression, and everything at the same time. So, you know, physically beating and winning, but mentally losing. So it's kind of twisted feeling. It's so hard, and you know, I threw up and I vomited. Yeah, it was so tough. I've gone through my whole life drawing from my experiences, both positive and negative. You have to believe that no matter what happens to you, that all things work together for good. I was rotten. I was a rotten kid. Hey! And uh, my excitement came from seeing what I could get away with. And I got a milk bottle and I filled it full of white paint, turned it upside down, let it drain for a day, and it would fill the milk bottle full of wine or beer or whatever. I had a real uh, professional criminal life as a teenager. Come ti me. And so then they start talking about what to do with me. And my brother said, well, we got to get him into some activity. And the chief said, well, we've been chasing him all over town for three or four years. I should just run him. <laughs> If I didn't start running, I think I'd have ended up in jail. And what a transition it was. It was just unbelievable. So I quit drinking, quit smoking, and started winning races. That's one thing you learn in sports, is you don't give up. You, know, you fight to the finish. And that's important in your whole life. In the war, too. Everybody brace. The determination to come out first, come out alive. But in prison camp, it's all a different story. Look at me. Because you're a victim, and they can do what they want. Don't look at me. That's a race for life, and you want to win, and you won't give up. If I can take it, I can make it. Ah! Uh, that's important for everybody in all walks of life, is to persevere. Don't give up, don't give in. It wasn't until he walked into that Billy Graham tent meeting in 1949 that his life truly changed for the better because uh, up to that point, he'd been harboring thoughts of revenge on the bird and his other captors and his, his desire to get even was just eating him alive and he was just spiraling down uh, with uh, what we know today as uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, alcoholism. And so when he walked into that, that uh, tent meeting and realized that uh, the promises he made on the life raft and in prison camp, that if God would get him home alive, that he'd seek him and serve him, he realized he hadn't made good on those, those promises. And so it was at that point that uh, you know, instead of uh, turning to the left and leaving the tent, he went to the backstage area and uh, got down on his knees and went through the sinner's prayer and was a man changed instantly. Where he had had uh, nightmares about uh, the bird for five years, uh, every night. Uh, nightmares so bad that he would wake up with, uh, 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 with throttling the bird in his dreams, but one night he woke up and he was actually throttling my mother in the bed. Uh, so that night he came back from the Billy Graham tent meeting. He didn't have a nightmare, and he never had one the rest of his life. He took such pride in the fact that he really went out on his feet, and uh, and so he he was called. He he went to the hospital, and I was called that he he was there, and I brought the film on my laptop, and I I sat with him and showed him, and and had the great honor of watching this extraordinary man uh, at the end of his life watch his life and remember who he was, what he'd done, his family, his mom, his brother. Mac on the raft, um, Mac's passing. You know, so so it wasn't like it wasn't like a film. It wasn't like sitting there and studying film. It was just, I think I watched him more than I looked at the screen. I just watched his eyes as he watched the film. 
these were my bedtime stories growing up. And by the time I was, uh, uh, you know, by the time I was born, he was very, uh, very adept at talking about it. You know, coming back from the war, being a famous athlete, uh, they were making him talk about it. And it was hard for him to do. He would have to take a couple of shots or something to do it. And then, but the more he talked about it, the easier it became. And then once he, uh, once he came to faith, then it was very easy to talk about. And I think it's, it's cathartic for people to be able to talk about those uh, rough experiences that they've had. I was on set and I had the audacity to run around Roger Deakins' earshot, claiming that we were making a classic. And we, we, we watch classic films for research. The Hill, for instance, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, you know. So we wanted to really sit with that spirit and discover what it was. Keep going the way you're going, you end up as a bum on the street. If you can take it, you can make it. You can do this, Luke. You train, you fight harder than those other guys, and you win. Zero inbound. is the Olympic athlete. Louis Zamperini, he's just extraordinary. That's you, right? Yeah. There's a handsome man. <laughs> His whole life was about all the lessons he learned from the resilience of the human spirit. He always tried to be inspirational and help others, but he always wanted to do it through a film. And he's waited 50 years and now this is that moment. Inbound, four o'clock low. Prepare to crash. Oh! Every day, I think we all look at each other and think, how did he really survive this? We're gonna die out here. We're not dying! You have to believe in sheer determination, the determination to come out alive. Sometimes believing, it's hard to do. You have to believe that no matter what happens to you, that all things work together for good. If I can take it, I can make it. It's about seeing somebody try really hard and not give up. Louis' story brings people together to push themselves to be their best. Do you feel like that's what you gotta do for, for Louie? If he drops it, shoot. Come on, Louie. To persevere, I think, is important for everybody. Don't give up, don't give in. Unfortunately, Unbroken does not portray Zamperini's salvation experience during a 1949 Billy Graham crusade in Los Angeles. But he wrote about the lessons he learned during the war and what he learned after he surrendered his life to Christ in his book, Don't Give Up, Don't Give In. I hope you enjoyed the first word today. Thanks for your continued support of this very network. Until next time, this is Paul Crouch, Jr. God bless.